Hey YouTube, this is my second video of the night, and it's actually the second time I've tried to record this video because I was only starting it and I realized it was already 10 minutes, so hopefully we'll do better now. Today I'm doing a tutorial on how to use RODI water, which is reverse osmosis deionization water, to change the pH and manage the pH in your tanks. So, and also, pardon me, you can pretend this is a slushy, but it's not. But it's good. And it's putting me in a good mood. But it's really cold. Holy crap. Okay, so, here's the rundown. A five-gallon tank, I've already told you before, I want to be a shrimp tank. Mind you, I have no fish whatsoever. I have no shrimp or anything in this tank, just plants and snails, but they're goners anyways, so if they die in this experiment, they die in this experiment and I don't have to kill them myself. Anyways, so, but here's the thing, shrimp have to, when they grow, they have to shed their exoskeletons, they molt, and um, they have to do this or they will die. So, that's all very well and good, but unfortunately, they can't do this for whatever reason. Um, I think it's like their exoskeletons are too um, solid, too hard, and they won't come off if <coughs> they're in water that's um, got a really high like hardness rating and then also a really high pH. Well, lucky for me, the water that comes out of my tap, which is well water, by the way, um, is it's really hard water and it has an 8.6 for pH which is super duper high so I was going to show you one of the things you can do to manage your pH levels because I leave it from my other tanks because it's a stable pH and it's okay as long as it's stable it's okay um, for most for most fish and most animals um, as long as it's, it's more important for it to be stable than for it to be at a certain number. But with shrimp, it definitely needs to be lower than what I've got. So, enter the RODI water. This is a five-gallon bucket, or tub, or whatever you want to call it, of RODI water. RODI, I think I already said this, stands for Reverse Osmosis Deionization. And basically it means that they took the water and they took everything but the literal H2O out of it. So there's no minerals, it's got nothing. Um, it has a pH, they told me of around 6, I haven't tested it yet, but that's going to come in just a minute. It has a pH of around 6-ish, and that's it. So, yeah. Mm, one thing you do need to know is that you can't just take this water and put it 100% in a tank, fill the tank with it, and then put fish in it and expect the fish to live. Because the fish need the minerals, they need the nutrients that are naturally occurring in the water to be healthy and to survive. So, don't do that. It's a bad idea. But what you can do is a couple things. You can just buy the water. This water from my LFS, which is Seascape Aquatics, if you're in Colorado Springs, highly recommended. Um, they charge 25 cents a gallon for it. So, if you have a big tank, I guess it would add up, but I'm not doing anything with my big tanks, just my five. So, 25 cents a gallon. And what you can do is you can um, put in some, I don't remember what it's called, it's like $12 for a thing that's like this big. Um, but it's like this powder, and basically it just reclaims the water. It puts it straight at a 7.0, and it puts all the nutrients that you need into it right away, automatically. Sorry, I've got stuff all over the floor here. So, and 11 bucks. That's really easy. Um, but because my pH is really high, and if your pH is as high as mine, 8.6, you can do this too. Or really, I suppose, if anything, you just have to figure out the ratio. You can mix your tap water 
with the RODI water until it gets to the level that you actually need. So that's what I'm going to do. You need a couple things for this. Obviously you need your tap water. I'm going to use the water straight out of my tank. Um, and you need the RODI water. You need um, a measuring, some sort of measuring dish. You need um, like a bowl or a pitcher and you need either test strips or like a test kit of some kind that tests the pH and um, the hardness. I'm going to use ow, quick dip strips just because like I said there's no fish in here and so once I figure out the ratio um, then I can just play with it and once I get it right and then I'll put the fish in once or the shrimp in once I feel comfortable. So I'm not so worried about a huge degree of accuracy, but these work pretty good in my experience. So that's what I'm going to do, or that's what you need. I'm really spacey, and I really have not had that much uh, slushy um, for me to be spacey. It's just been, it's a Friday, and it's been a really long week. Rife with migraines at my you. So, I'm going to go get that stuff, and then we'll get started. Okay, so what I did was I poured two cups of the RODI water in here. I already dumped it out. And then I used my little measuring cup for two cups. Um, and I poured them both into here. Mix it up with a chopstick. Make sure it's all stirred up really well. I've given it a chance to sit for a while because I haven't done this before. I don't know if it needs to sit for a little bit. But it's been sitting for like maybe five minutes. And I've been stirring it because I like the sound the chopstick makes. So I'm going to take my dip strip. And then I'm going to put it in. And then I'm going to let it sit for 30 seconds per the instructions on here. And we want it to be like you're right in the 7 range. And then for um, the total hardness, which is the GH, um, I want it to be between 50 and 150. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but we will see. And, yeah, so didn't do that. And I'm going to go check it up in the light under my or on the 55 just because I've got better light there and I can have a better test result that way so bear with me okay so it worked so for me all I really needed to do is half and half um, you might have to tweak yours and check it a couple different times and see what happens but yeah it's really that simple you just play with the ratio on a small scale and then you can do it on a big scale. If obviously, if you have fish in your tank, do not straight up take out half the water and then put half of this in there because you're going to shock your fish because you're going to change the pH overnight or really in the couple minutes that it takes you to change it. So even less than overnight. So don't do it like that. If you have uh, already, if you already have fish in your tank but you're still trying to bring it down, then just when you do your water changes, a little at a time, when you add new water back, add some of this in. And if you do frequent enough and small enough water changes, I would say just add this in. Um, obviously, if you only do like one 50% water change a month, which I don't recommend doing, but if you do, don't do it like that. But if you do like a weekly or bi-weekly 10-20% water change, I would just put it in. I mean, be careful, especially think of what kind of fish you have. Do your research. If they're really hardy fish, then they probably be fine. If they're more delicate fish and they cost you a lot of money or you're super duper attached to them, then I would maybe be more cautious. But you are smart. You have a brain. So you can figure it out. But obviously you would just do a little bit at a time. And over time, you'd have the pH where you want it to be. And then from then on, it would just be a matter of when you're filling the tank, after you get it to the right pH, you would just, um, when you fill the tank for like top offs and water changes, you would just know what ratio you have in your tank, you know, or you would do on the small scale, 
and know what you need to put in so you do half and half or whatever works for you. So I hope that helps you. What I'm going to do now, because like I said, there's nothing in here except for plants. And the plants are kind of a bit of jungle anyway, so I'm going to say goodbye to you guys. I'm going to pull out all these plants and do the cleaning and the maintenance, drain half of the water, put this in there, do a final test, and then I'll make little changes from there. I'm not going to put any um, livestock into the tank until I've got it exactly where I want it to be for the shrimpies, and then I'm going to get shrimps. Yay! So, super exciting. Thanks for watching, and I hope you guys all take care. Have a great day.